वेलकम टू लोकसत्ता यशस्वी भव ना विल डिस्कस विद द क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री फोर एंड फाइव इन कंस्ट्रक्शन चैप्टर देर आर इन टू ड्रॉ द टेंजेंट ऑफ अ सर्कल देर आर थ्री टाइप्स टू ड्रॉ द टेंजेंट वेन द पॉइंट इज ऑन द सर्कल टू ड्रॉ द टेंजेंट वेन द पॉइंट इज आउटसाइड द सर्कल एंड टू ड्रॉ द टेंजेंट वेन विदाउट यूजिंग सेंटर ऑफ द सर्कल सो इन द क्वेश्चन पेपर द क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री टू इज draw the tangent to the circle with center a when the point b is outside the circle now when you are uh, drawing the tangent to the circle when the point is outside read the question very carefully if the question is draw a tangent that means you are expected to draw only one tangent if the question is draw tangents then the question is different if the question is draw a tangent then first you draw the circle with the given radius and then look at the point b suppose the distance is given is 7.2 then you bisect the segment ab and after bisecting it draw a semi circle with ab as a diameter and the intersection of this circle and the semi circle is your point p and then you can draw a tangent this is when you have to expect it to draw one tangent if the question is draw tangents then the same procedure first draw the circle then take a distance of 7.3 and locate point b bisect segment ab and draw a complete circle now this circle will intersect the given circle in two points suppose we name as p and one is q so you will get two tangents one is pb and one is bq so that's the difference between the question draw a tangent and draw tangents so if the question is draw a tangent then only one expected if the question is draw tangents then you have to draw two tangents in this case we have drawn a semi circle here we have drawn a circle sometimes they'll ask you to find the length of the tangent segments that is bp and bq and in your textbook theorem they have given that the length of the tangent segments are equal so after measuring the length of bp and bq even if you are not getting it equal you have to write it equal because according to theorem the length has to be equal so don't forget to write the length of whatever the the length of tangent segment bp and bq and for construction don't forget to draw analytical figure that is very important it's a, it's a must next question is question number 4 the four vertices are given and using slope you have to prove that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram now they are use the word using slope so we can you prove this quadrilateral as a parallelogram by using distance formula also but we have to use slope concept and that is why what we are going to do is we know that if two lines are parallel if their slopes are equal so you have to find the slope of line ab and line bc if their slopes will be equal so the lines will become parallel similarly find the slope of ab and find the slope of cd their slopes will be equal so the lines are parallel and if opposite sides are parallel the quadrilateral is a parallelogram and that is how we can prove this particular quadrilateral as a parallelogram uh, one more property which is given in a textbook is if the product of the slopes of line is minus 1 or if two lines are perpendicular to each other if the product of the slope is minus 1 that property is also given it can be used to prove this parallelogram as a rectangle suppose the slope of line ad and and line dc is minus 1 then line ad will be perpendicular to line dc and then this parallelogram will become a rectangle because parallelogram with 190 degree will become a rectangle so using slope that concept is very important so we have to use slope concept to prove it as a parallelogram the next question is based on the mensuration the radius is given the central angle the theta value is given and we have to find the area of the segment you can use zarek formula of trigonometry that is area of segment is r square into pi theta upon 360 minus sin theta upon 2 you should know the values of sin uh, 30 45 60 90 all these values you have learned from your standard 9 textbook or you if you don't we want to use trigonometry then you can use the the the, the other method which is supposed to be longer one where you can find the area of se segment by using area of sector minus area of triangle but of course it will be very lengthy if you use the first one then it will be very easy you have just have to substitute the values then question number 3 is prove that sum of the square of the diagonals of a parallelogram is equal to sum of the squares of uh, squares of its sides 
Now this is a solved example which is given in the first chapter, similarity. There are so many solved examples which are given in all the lessons. Do not neglect solved examples. Many times we only solve the textual questions and we don't look at the solved examples. So solved examples are very much part of the syllabus. So don't neglect them. This is one of the solved examples. Same type of question is there in the exercise also, where instead of parallelogram, they are given the same question. Instead of parallelogram, they have changed it to rhombus. So don't get confused. There are two different questions. Instead of parallelogram, in exercise, it is given as a rhombus. And in that case, we'll use Pythagoras theorem. In this case, we'll use Apollonius theorem because the diagonals of parallelogram bisect each other. They are not perpendicular bisectors. So don't use Pythagoras here. It will go wrong totally. And this is a solved example. So again, many solved examples are given in the lesson. Don't neglect them because they are very much part of your syllabus. Now with question number five, the first question is you have to uh, prove 30-60-90 triangle theorem. There are two parts of the theorem that if the angles of triangle are 30-60-90, then we have to prove the side opposite of 30 degree, that is BC is a half of the hypotenuse AC and the side opposite of 60 degree is root 3 upon 2 times the hypotenuse. Now in this theorem, you are expected to do the construction. We do construction when the given data is not sufficient to do the proof. So in such case, we do the construction. The construction is on ray CB, take a point D such that BC is equal to BD and D dash B dash C and join AD. Now in the proof, later on you must be aware that we prove this triangle ADC as equilateral triangle. So when you are drawing this figure, after construction, it should lo look like an equilateral triangle. That all these minute things you should know because afterwards in the proof we are going to prove this as an equilateral triangle. So after doing the construction make sure that this bigger triangle ADC it should be an equilateral triangle. We are going to prove this triangle equilateral by using perpendicular bisector theorem and isosceles triangle theorem. You can prove this by proving the triangles congruent also but I have already told you since this is a theorem we have to use textbook method. You cannot chain the method. For other sums, you can allow to chain the method. In Suppose if this is a sum, then you can prove the two triangles congruent by using SAS test and then we can say angle C is congruent to angle D. So if C is 60, D is also 60 and the third angle will be also 60 because sum of all angles of triangle 180. But however, this is a theorem and as it is given in a textbook, they have proved this triangle ADC equilateral by using perpendicular bisector theorem and then by using isosceles triangle theorem. So you refer the textbook method only. Do not change the method. After drawing the triangle, you write down given to prove, then the construction and then you write the proof stepwise. There are two parts of the theorem. First part is you have to prove side opposite of 30 is half of the hypotenuse and using the first part, we have to prove the second part that is side opposite of 60 degree is root 3 upon 2 times the hypotenuse. So theorem can be asked as a 3 marks question also, 4 also or it can be 5 marks question depending upon the, the length of the theorem. The next question is the new part which is given in your syllabus that is a construction of similar triangles. This is a new part which is introduced. Now there are two types of sums in the first type. The two triangles which are similar, they don't have anything common in between. For example, triangle ABC is similar to triangle PQR, so there is nothing is common between them. In this case, the name of the two triangles is triangle SHR is similar to triangle SVU. So as you can see, there is one vertex common in between the two triangles. So in such case, we cannot draw two different triangles which are similar. If the two triangles which are given, they don't have anything common between them, then we can draw two, two different similar triangles. But in this case, since they have one vertex common, then we cannot draw two similar triangles. So how to deal with this particular sum? Now in this case, first, we will construct this triangle SHR. Now first triangle SHR, the length of three sides are given. Now you must be wondering which sides to be drawn first or which sides to be taken as a base. So you see the ratio which is given to you. In the ratio, whichever side is belongs to the triangle SHR, that you side you will draw as a base. So you can see SH which is given over here. SV is not there. So SH which is 4.5, you will first draw SH. Then using rounder, take a radius of 5.8, cut the arc and radius of 5.2, cut another arc and you complete the triangle SHR first by SSS construction. 
then which vertex is common s is common so at s keep the rounder and draw any one acute angle suppose i have drawn the angle of 40 degree so draw any acute angle step number 2 after drawing this particular ray in the ratio the the bigger number is 5 so this particular ray you divide into five equal parts out of in the ratio again you see which is the bigger number so according to that divide this particular ray into five equal parts after drawing and name them as s1 s2 s3 s4 s5 now what to join sh is three part so we can see sh is three so from s3 you draw the line and join it join s3 and h why because sh is three parts so this is sh is three parts then at s5 using rounder draw angle congruent to angle we have done this in basic construction so this angle over here should be equal to this angle so that we get line parallel s3 h and s5 v the two lines should be parallel to each other so these two lines should be parallel and what which uh, which point is over here as in ratio you have sh upon sv it means that shv will be collinear these points are collinear s dash h dash v so this point is your point v so don't get confused which point is over here since sh upon sv is given that means point s h v are collinear so this is your point v now after locating point v you have to draw angle congruent to angle by using rounder so this angle should be congruent to this angle so draw it over here and then draw this line and locate point u this is how we got two triangles which are similar to each other and don't forget for four marks question or three marks question or five marks question don't forget to draw the analytical figure as far as hot questions are concerned there are ample of hot questions are given behind the textbook first be thorough with the textual hot question then you can refer some other old textbooks of SSC board from your school for a additional practice of hot question but don't get scared of hot question first you have to be thorough with the textbook make sure excluding hots whatever the questions are asked in the textbook you are thorough with them many times students pay attention only on hot question and then they end up doing mistake in easy questions which are question number one and two you should not lose marks in question number one two three four and then only once you're thorough with the textbook hot question then you can practice the the question which are not in textbooks which can be asked outside questions you can refer the old textbooks for it and uh, you can get some additional material from the school you can take the help of your teachers and prepare for hot questions also